Hi, I'm Dan Danford, and this is another episode of Money Made Easy for DadsDivorce.com. Great question from the website today. Every day I read about people who have fallen prey to some sort of financial scam. I used to believe I'd be able to tell if I was being scammed or not, but now I'm not so sure. What are some good ways to ensure that you are not hurt in a financial scam? Well, that, that's just a terrific question and one that I wish everybody knew more about. Um, the truth is, is that many scam artists kind of look for our vulnerabilities and use those to their advantage. So if somebody's in a particularly bad financial situation or going through a really tough time in their life, maybe they've lost a spouse or they've you know, endured some kind of financial or health crisis, um, that's when these scam artists kind of zero in. So, I mean, it's, it's doubly horrible. It's bad enough that they take advantage of somebody, but they often take advantage of people who really, you know, can, can use it the least. I mean, they really take advantage of the most vulnerable people. So um, I, I, I just think it's horrible, and I think we all ought to be aware of it, and I think we all ought to be aware of it for the people in our lives as well. I mean, it's not just being taken advantage of ourselves. It's our elderly relatives, our children, um, our neighbors. I mean, if you see something that doesn't feel right, I think you ought to step up and say something about it. Now, what are some things you can do? Well, one thing is to keep pretty decent financial records. Okay, if, if you you know, write down every check that you spend, if you keep track of things, if you can prove that you can own things, um, all those types of things actually make you less vulnerable to people. One of the things that I think is a classic is, you know, if somebody's getting ready to do some work for you and they demand cash, okay, that ought to be a big red flag because there's no way to track that cash, um, which means there's more likely opportunity for them to claim that you never gave it to them, okay? So, you know, when somebody says something like that, anytime there's something that's kind of off the board, then I think it's really important, and, and it ought to be a red flag. Um, the other thing is, you know, keep private things private. Now, obviously, when you go sit down in a bank lobby and you buy something from the bank and they want your Social Security number or they need whatever, you know, records that you have and you can provide, then I think that's fine. But if somebody calls you up on the telephone or sends you an email and they want your Social Security number, don't give it to them. I mean, that's just... You know, again, it's a red flag. It's something to watch out for because legitimate businesses don't behave that way. You know, that's not what they would do. They, they would have, you know, safeguards in place. Uh, check those vulnerabilities. I think this is really important. Um, like I said earlier, we often have kind of weaknesses or, or, or oversights when we're most vulnerable. So if you've gone through a tragedy or you've gone through a crisis or for whatever reason your, your, your stability isn't great right now, be especially wary. You know, if you have to, you know, bring in your child or your neighbor and say, hey, I'm feeling very vulnerable right now and somebody's been calling me on the phone and can you help me? I mean, I think that's really, really important. Um, if you decide to engage somebody, you know, whether it's work on your house or some other project, go ahead and check out their references. You know, there are no secrets today. That's, you know, one of my big themes when I talk to people is there are no secrets. Okay, on anybody you're dealing with, you can go onto the internet and Google their name and you can find out all kinds of information about them. Okay, if there are problems, you are likely to find it there. If they are an investment person, then you can go to, like in my case, you know, we work in the state of Missouri. There's a state of Missouri website that lists every advisor in the state who is registered. Okay, first of all, don't do business with somebody who isn't registered, but if they are registered, you can look up their disciplinary record. Okay. I can actually tell you that some years ago, I had a, um, a couple come to me. Their daughter's Christmas present to them was to have me check out a guy they were doing business with. Okay. She said, hey, I'll pay Dan a couple hundred dollars to check out this fellow you're doing business with. And guess what? When I went and checked on this person, he had a terrible disciplinary record, terrible, and ultimately lost his licenses 
Okay, and so this daughter just basically by saying, hey, I know there's a way to check people out and I'm gonna have somebody help you do that, probably saved these people a ton of money. I mean, references are easy to find today. And if people don't have, if they aren't registered, you can still find consumer complaints and all kinds of stuff out there. So I think that's really important. And the last thing I'd say is to kind of trust your gut. And I know, you know, that makes a lot of sense, but obviously there are people out there who trust their gut and get into trouble. But it all goes back to the old thing about there's no such thing as something for nothing. I mean, if you hear about something and, you know, just have a funny feeling that that can't be right, it probably isn't right. Now, one of the things that scam artists do, and I'll just bring one, well, I've got a couple examples, but I'll just bring up uh, one or two just to give you an idea. The whole Bernie Madoff thing, um, you know, terrible crisis. I mean, he scammed so many people, it's unbelievable. But there was a religious theme within his scam. You know, many of the people who invested money with him were all of the same religion. And they kind of networked to, hey, Bernie can help you out, Bernie can take care of you, Bernie whatever. And, and that was part of it. it. It made people drop this gut feeling. You know, people might ordinarily say, well, you couldn't do that. Nobody can do that. But when somebody from their church said, hey, I want you to talk to Bernie, they kind of closed their eyes to the gut feeling, and that was a problem. There was also a fellow several years ago up north, his affinity group was pilots. And this fellow ran, um, you know, a scam investment firm that invested money for commercial airline pilots. But it turned out he wasn't really investing money for him, um, and it just became a horrible mess. And again, that whole affinity group thing, that, 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 that kind of camaraderie that comes from shared you know, business or shared religion or whatever, sometimes kind of clouds our eyes to things that ought to be red flags anyway. Well, that, that's probably enough information on the topic today, so we won't go into a lot more details. I just want you to know that anybody who's reputable who approaches you can put you at ease. Okay, there are enough things out there. There are enough, you know, insurance, um, FDIC insurance, SIPC insurance. There's websites from the state, websites from the Securities and Exchange Commission. There are a lot of ways out there for people to kind of prove their goodness. What I want you to do is to be very careful when you're working with people to actually look into those things, okay? And if they can't produce those kinds of proofs, then stay away from them. Uh, actually walk away from them, run away from them. Uh, just get away from them as quickly as you can. That's another episode of Money Made Easy for Dad's Divorce. I'm Dan Danford and we'll see you again next week.